2013 was another year of extreme weather. It was marked by deadly wildfires and floods, unrelenting heat waves and drought, and one of the strongest tropical storms ever to strike land. Typhoon Haiyan killed 6,000 in the Philippines and left over 4 million, like Marilyn Dela Cruz, homeless. This is my father-in-law, and he is still missing until now, and we are searching for the body. We do hope that we can find only the body and this my son's shorts. This is all we have for now. While research indicates a warmer atmosphere makes bad weather worse, Richard Kerr, a veteran writer for Science Magazine, says no single weather event can be linked to climate change. Beyond heat waves and heavy precipitation, heavy rainstorms, heavy snowstorms, scientists are being much more cautious about making a connection uh, between typhoons or, or tornadoes and global warming. But leading scientists spoke definitively in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Assessment Report released in September. In it, they affirmed with overwhelming confidence that global warming is real and humans are largely to blame. Announcing the panel's findings in Stockholm, World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Michel Giraud underscored the threat. It should serve as yet another wake-up call that our activities today will have a profound impact on society, not only for us, but for many generations to, to come. That wake-up call came shortly before the annual U.N. talks in Warsaw, where delegates from 192 countries met to lay the groundwork for a new climate treaty to replace the one that expired in 2012. What emerged from the meeting was a clue to what a global treaty might look like. It would be one likely stitched together by national policies, according to Elliot Derringer, a policy expert at the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions. He points to the emissions trading efforts underway in China, the new climate law in Mexico, and the U.S. Climate Action Plan announced by President Obama in June. Certainly uh, countries, cities, states don't have to wait for the international agreement and they shouldn't wait for the international agreement. I, I think instead uh, their efforts need to be brought together and coalesced in the international agreement and it's only if uh, we are seeing progress at the local and national level that we'll be able to produce a strong international agreement. Derringer adds that the solution to climate change must come from every level of government, the public and private sectors, and each person as an individual. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News, Washington.